This video is to show you how simple it can be to get one commercial quality shoot from start to finish. So it's like a job shadow. You can see it the whole way through how many times I've filmed something, the things I'm aiming for. There's a couple of important points I want to make about this. So these are the things that I want you to notice while I'm filming and doing this stuff in actual application. I will go over examples of each when I get to that point, but I am using all of them all the time. I'm on Highway 1 in California and I've got other videos about this, but we use Google Maps and Air Map to figure out a good spot to go film at that has lots of scenery. I don't know much else about this other than what I've seen from Google Earth. I know there's a beach down here somewhere and I know that there's a path that leads down to it so it might look nice so we're gonna walk over there and see if it turns out good. Either way we're at the beach and because we're at the beach in the middle of the day there's a lot of angles and directions and structure I can take advantage of. This is the crazy thing about Northern California. You're walking down a, a hillside that's completely empty like you pull over to park and find a nice spot to, to hike along a trail to see if there's anything you can get. And then out of nowhere, you have this like planet earth discovery channel oasis that nobody cares about. There's nobody out here. It's just me, but I love the view over this, uh, over this cliff. As dramatic as that was for me, just walking up here, that's what I'm trying to replicate because this view I'm going to try and show you came out of nowhere. I mean, when I came up like this, and stopped and went, holy smokes, I gotta show my mother. I'm gonna try and duplicate that feeling. So let's find a nice patch of dirt that's not gonna be super sandy. See if I can get my all new DJI Mini 3 Pro to cooperate. The sun just came out to you right when I got down here. Um, all morning long, super cloudy, and that's kind of a gamble you take filming anywhere in California along the coast. We're just gonna get this up in the air and see if we can duplicate that look. So. I want to give it some room. I don't want to hug the ground because I don't want the collision sensor to bump into a bush or something. You can try and do this in normal if you're worried about crashing because then the collision sensors are still on. I'm doing this in cinema mode though because I have to get the smoothest footage I can and that's the slowest, most cautious flying and I love how smooth it comes out. I'm shooting in pro mode. At the bottom right, click on it. It'll put you in pro. You want to aim for a shutter of 60. It's broad daylight though so I can't get that because I want to keep my exposure meter at zero. This looks like the best I'll get so I'll work with it. And here is a perfect example, point number one. I'm flying very, very slowly. Just because the drone can go fast doesn't mean you have to. You will be much happier with your footage if you treat it like it's a slider and you have a camera on the ground or it's just a really long tripod. We're going super slow over this cliff so that there's tons of time to absorb the change. Then once we get to that point that we're past completely over the edge of the cliff and you don't see the grass, you can push forward a lot faster because now you need to give it a little bit more speed to show the scenery passing by. You do have to ease into it though, you can't just ram it forward. Now that the cliff is going to the bottom of the frame, we need to adjust very gently. Tug down really, really lightly to aim the camera really slowly downward more. As soon as you see it moving at all, you have to relax though and be really slow. Chill out because otherwise what you wind up doing is yanking it too hard. And what I am a little upset about is how dark that is but with the data I've gotten from the mini 3 pro so far I know that I can recover a lot of those shadows it's also dramatic just as it is with with all that that uh, silhouette so let me switch to normal mode and I'm just gonna hold it back and fly right back to where I came from where I started which was oh, here it comes whoa all right this little guy I'm gonna try that one more time whoa now we're on to point number two, expect to do retakes. I'm sure that first shot was fine. However, I don't want to leave anything up to chance and I noticed in my preview that the cliff, the side of it was a little bit dark. I don't know how the preview translate to the actual footage in the end because I'm new with the Mini 3 Pro right now. So just to be sure, I'm going to do a second take of the exact same thing. However, I'm going to adjust the shutter to make it a little bit brighter to air on the side of the cliff instead of the background. You want to have something in the foreground though to give it perspective because as I accelerate and just push it full throttle right here, you have all that going by underneath the drone. So I'm going full speed now and I'm gonna tug lightly, lightly down on the left wheel, see? Then it just popped up. I have my settings like way more cushioned as well. And while I'm floating over here, I'm gonna try and save this and turn this into a, a shot of the cliff, I'm gonna zoom right by because that'll give it some cool perspective when you have something passing in the foreground. And then I'm gonna hold on this, this little pool of rocks down here. I saw there was birds on top of the rock though, so I decided not to bother them and then float backwards 
but when I gained some altitude and turned back towards the cliff, it... Oh! Oh, that's so nice. We're just gonna go to the left a little bit while we're... Commit and do not adjust. Once you've started, you don't adjust two seconds in and then readjust and then change the angle again a third time. You're gonna wind up with two second snippets that are useless. You don't wanna do that. I'm in normal mode right now. It doesn't work as well as Cinna and I can't adjust the gimbal without it looking obvious that I'm a guy aiming the camera right now. It'll just look unprofessional. But since I've already committed, now this is what we're working with. I'm just moving right to left and that's a nice shot that I've already got going. Otherwise, you'll wind up with footage that you hate because you can see yourself adjusting in the middle of the shot and you don't want to use that. If I was going to adjust, I should stop, change the settings, and then try to get something that's panning while aiming down. But I'm not going to do that, I'll just work with this. That's so pretty. All right, let's see where I'm at. I know I was over by the trailhead. I gotta open up my little map up down here because it'll tell me. All right, so I want to face this way and that will take me back to, let's record this. It's me, the content creator. Now I'm gonna give it a second try and see if I can get something different because I do really enjoy the look of this. Close up or far away, there's tons to work with with a cliff that's just this vivid with this much texture on the side of it next to the ocean. And that whole coastline in the background. Now that it's lit up, oh, it just looks super, super good. So I'm gonna try and replicate what I had a second ago. Flying in normal now, I'm gonna switch over to a cinema in a second. The benefit of normal is that I can fly a little faster because typically I keep my settings slower when I'm flying on a Cine. And that also means that the max speed is lower though because I want to focus on it being smooth and not on, you know, being quick with it. There's a guy over there and I, uh, that does not delight me, but you know, what can you do? There is a reason that I try to shoot all my footage with the same settings as often as I can. It's because when I'm editing and I set the color settings for one of them, I can copy and paste those settings to all of the footage and it works well. After getting closer to the cliff though, we can't avoid it here. The cliff looks a little too bright and the clouds back there are definitely too bright. So either stop filming or make a mental note that you're going to stop and adjust the settings before you start your next continuous shot that you're going for or your next movement. Let's switch this in and see if I can get a smoother shot here. You don't have to move much. It can be really slow and it's still obvious in 4K. When you got something tall, it's okay to turn quickly. Like now I'm turning, tilting down a little bit faster and that's fine because I've got a lot to look at. There's a lot for the whoever's watching this to consume. One more thing about this cliff that no amount of settings are going to fix, we're facing into the sun and you typically just don't wanna be doing this as often as possible unless you have to. You will see a tremendous improvement instead of shooting into the sun if you shoot away from the sun and you will see way better, more even lighting no matter what you're shooting. So if we're forced to look into the sun while we're filming and even if it casts a glare on the lens or whatever, we're at least looking further and further away from the sun while we're doing our movement so that we can get more even light. I do really hate bothering this guy if like he's spreading his granddad's ashes or something and I'm like right here over there, Meow. but you know, what else do I wanna get here? I could spend all day up here on this, on this hill trying to get like rocks and um, take photos. And I just don't want to be completely consumed by one location because I've got one battery to work with on this thing. So it's like, I need to choose where, where what's worth spending it on. That is really pretty though right here. I kind of addressed this earlier when we were flying by that cliff, but a huge amateur mistake most people make is flying way too high and filming way too far away. You will really enjoy the sensor and the camera's capability if you get close up to things and fill up the frame. It's an easel. You need to fill up the frame to show everything that's going on. You don't have to be a million miles away. So if there's a rock, it's a great opportunity to get just as close as you can. The drone looks like it's much closer than it actually is, so you do have a lot of room to get close up to things. In the end, you don't know which of the 15 seconds you get you're gonna wind up liking the most or when a big wave is gonna come by, so you really should be getting a lot longer shots than you actually need. And while I am this close, I'm gonna switch over to photos. With the 16 ND, I can get photos that are uh, a relatively usable shutter speed. One over 240 is fine. I'll do 240, zero, that's good. Oh, switch to normal. So, I should do, I know there's gonna be cropping because this is gonna be a, a manual panorama I do. So I should have one, 
it's very low here with all that water splash right now then another like that and then the final one like this the panorama didn't come out exactly how i wanted so i actually just wound up using this still photo which i like more but you do both because you never know I want to save a little bit of battery. Oh, that's nice. I want to save a little bit of battery for uh, when I come back up here. So anything I'm going to do with this cliff, I'm going to walk over to and just get that myself while I'm standing next to it. I, I'm not used to Northern California because I grew up in San Diego. So I'm used to a million cars, a million people. You find little pockets that you can fly at. And I've gone back to film tons of times. You find little stretches 50 feet wide that are safe with no people. But I do so miss like mortals and, and anytime people are nearby, I don't even want to deal with it. So Northern California is weird because every mile is something super scenic that if it were in San Diego, it would be a monument. There's way bigger cliffs, way more to look at. Nice rolling hills. It makes me wonder if San Diego was ever like this at one point. I know it was more like that when I was a kid in the 90s, but this is just like phenomenal. It's April. The weather's perfect. It was super cloudy a minute ago. Anyways, I'm not used to having this much scenery with no people. That's just super odd. We have tons of light over here and you get just enough beach haze that, oh wow, oh my God, let me get up here. Holy smokes. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. I gotta get this now too. It is so nice out here. I'm so lucky to be doing this. Even so I'm just happy as heck that I can, I can do this. This is like a dream job. Do I want to take videos of that where it's all nice and even exposed, the cascading little coves, or do I want to turn around and get this super cool contrast with the blue and the green with the hills? I wish I could go stand on that hill back there. That's what I really want to do. Stand against that cliff because if you filmed me in the foreground with a shot rising and you could see the waves in the background with all the glittering, it would be super cool. It forced perspective on how far the horizon is how fast the drone is moving. Instead, what I'll settle for is uh, getting a shot against this cliff because this is this is on its own is super nice. I've got my state-of-the-art high-grade ND filter from my uh, my sponsors that funded that who can afford to get me the only the finest. You have to be careful with grass because if the ground is uneven and you tell the drone to take off, it's going to lean and it'll the propeller will catch on a blade of grass or something and then it'll stop. It's not a big deal if that happens. Just you just don't want it because obviously it's not ideal turn on screen recording. I'm going to get this in the air and then you'll just have to see the result of what I'm aiming for. First, let me get this shot right here. Exposure meter says zero and I hope I don't clip some grass doing this. I think that looks really nice. Uh, I like the way this is. While I'm here, I'm also going to try the 2x lens just to see how it comes out. You do not want to rush these shots. You should always hold it longer, long enough that it starts to feel awkward. Then you have enough footage. I also stood against the cliff to get some photos using the timed photo feature just to help fix my crippling vanity. I did one more shot going overhead. And then when I came back, I had to try and do like three times to time this right. But I wanted to tilt down while moving forward so that these two move in sync and you're getting a perspective on how far the cliff falls. Again, this is only doable with cinema mode. So make sure you're using that so that none of your movements are jerky. They're all super, super slow. So here's the finished video after using everything I shot in one location, in one spot, you can do the same thing too. If the video is a little jumpy or jagged in spots, that is because this was filmed in 24 frames a second and my iPhone footage and this video is made in 30 frames a second, so it doesn't translate perfectly, but I think you get the point.